Now that the world's finally post-pandemic, we can start looking forward to the old normal again, and a big part of that is the Olympics. After the Games got postponed in 2020 and pushed to 2021, they didn't look anything like they used to, with a limited audience and staff in masks everywhere. In today's video, we're looking at one of the greatest Aussie athletes and what she has to say ahead of Paris 2024. First off, here are all the details on her team. This one isn't just for the cycling experts. If you've heard of the Olympics at all, you've definitely heard of Anna Mears. The cyclist is a two-time gold medalist, and in the four Olympics she's competed in, she's won an insane six medals. In fact, she's such a big deal that she was the flag bearer for the 2016 Games in Rio for Australia. 2012 was a huge year for her, since just four years before that, she'd gone through an accident in Los Angeles where everyone was sure her career was over. Thankfully, she bounced right back to grab her second medal in London, making her the only Australian in history to win medals in four Olympics in a row. Now she's taking on the part of leading the the entire Australian team in Paris 2024, and there couldn't be anyone more perfect for the role. She understands that every athlete has a story, an ambition, and a feeling of great pride, and she plans to use that to the max as she leads the huge team through the games. She's also stepping into the role of a leader perfectly, as she's already spoken out about how she wants to provide a perfect environment for the rest of her team. She knows how important and life-changing the Olympic experience can be, and she wants to make sure everyone has a great time going through it. Mears went on to say that her top priority right now now is building relationships with leaders in the individual teams, and she wants to spend some time catching up with all the athletes. The athlete I have selected as the Australian Olympic team opening ceremony flag bearer for Rio is Anna Mears. <laughs> Next, there's no limit to what she can do. To be the head of mission for a whole national delegation going to the Olympics, you must too have had an insane career beforehand. Anna has exactly that. So let's talk about what she's been up to since she made her 2004 debut at the Athens Olympics. Even before her international career started, Anna was a talented cyclist, having won the first of her 11 world championship titles right before Athens 2004. She ended up setting a world record by becoming the first woman in history to finish the 500-meter time trial in under 34 seconds, also making her the first ever Australian female to win a gold medal in the Olympic velodrome. In the 2006 Commonwealth Games in Melbourne, she got the chance to compete against her sister Carrie, and it looks like the talent runs in the family. Because Carrie took home two bronze medals, Anna grabbed gold and silver. But in a couple years, she had to face the biggest disaster of her career. In a World Cup competition in LA, she crashed out and sustained some pretty serious injuries. The cyclist was completely beaten up, from torn ligaments to a dislocated shoulder and even a fractured spine. For an athlete, that kind of crash is career-ending, if not life-ending, but even that couldn't keep her down. In just 10 days after the incident, she was back to training, ready to make a comeback at Beijing 2008. And even after that kind of injury, she managed to get silver in the sprint, losing out on first place to Victoria Pendleton. Her extraordinary career kept going until 2016 when she announced her retirement. Yeah, absolutely. I think I learned a lot about myself and in my experiences through that accident recovery subsequently into Beijing, so I think it's made me a better athlete and a better person as a result. Moving on, things are changing in the world of sports. When you've had a career as amazing as Anna's, you not only learn to respect and honor the athletes around you, but you also learn how to lead them. There's a reason everyone's raving about the head of mission. She's been open about how she's going to be as a boss, and everyone's loving it. She's been making a huge point about athletes being vocal and says that every opinion is welcome in her delegation for Paris. Though she wants to keep protests outside the world of sports, she wants free thinkers and people that are open about their beliefs. Her opinion has been backed up by the president of the Australian Olympic Committee, Ian Chesterman, who also happens to be an ex-head of mission for the Games. He believes that people like Anna and himself, who are in administrative leading positions, have a responsibility to give athletes a platform to speak. Both Ian and Anna recognize that the world has changed, and athletes have a lot more to say than they used to, especially on social and political issues. This trend can be seen in almost every international sport, where players are outspoken about their beliefs and try and use their platforms to promote them. But Anna also realizes that there's a right time and place to speak out, and she's open about the fact that she'll back up everyone if they pick the right forum to express their opinions. Crowds are fundamental. Without a crowd, you have no environment. You have no um, 
friendly banter between who's waving the English flag, the Kiwi flag, the Botswanan flag. The home Australian crowd can play a huge part and be a big influence in the lifting performance of an athlete. We need to create that patriotism for those who are representing us in, our, in sport. So what did she have to say about it? Anna and Ian were both in Brisbane, Australia when she was officially appointed as head of the mission. This was when she spoke out about athletes wanting to have a place to speak and said that she'd be on their side if they did. She wants the world to know that athletes aren't just robots, they all have thoughts and beliefs, and they should have the right to voice them. Back in 2020, there was a survey carried out by Steve Hooker, who was the chair of the Australian Olympic Committee at the time. Out of around 500 Australian athletes, a whopping 80% said they don't want politics involved in actual competition, which makes complete sense to the new leader. She said that the Athletes Commission was a really important element in the Olympic Committee, and she was happy to hear that they've been surveyed and someone had gotten their opinions on public record. There's no way she's forcing anyone to have an opinion, she just wants to make sure they're comfortable when they do. 80% is a huge number, and Anna agrees with them when they say the podium isn't the best place to be doing any of that. She knows there are other areas and avenues for them to speak up, and she thinks they're welcome to do so. She went on to add that since sports are held in such high regard in the country, athletes have a bigger responsibility than just playing their sports well. They also have to act as role models for the rest of the community. She knows that her team is passionate about human rights and other issues at the moment, and she wants to hear all those opinions. What's more, another legend may be coming to Paris 2024. Australia already has a fantastic team going to Paris in 2024, but there's a chance it might get even better. The Aussie NBA legend Ben Simmons has said he's available to come and play for the national team in France, even though he hasn't done it since 2016. In the Rio Olympics in 2016, Simmons decided to focus more on the NBA draft and have a great rookie season, even though he'd already promised to play for the team a year before. This happened again in 2019 when he said he'd play for his national team at the Basketball World Cup, but backed out again at the last minute. The third time could have been the charm, but Tokyo 2020 wasn't in the cards either since he sat it out to improve his game for the upcoming NBA season instead. He's recently opened up about his poor history with his national team. He knows he's been kind of flaky, but he says he was in a bad place and couldn't make it. Now he's ready to play at the Olympics, and even said it's a dream of his to make it happen. At the same time, he didn't want anyone dictating how he does it. For now, basketball fans will just have to keep their fingers crossed. Finally, here's the latest on Paris 2024. The whole world is waiting to see the best athletes show up in Paris in a year's time, especially since they'll be the first Olympics since 2016 not to be affected by COVID, at least for now. At the moment, the first ticket sales for the Games are set to start in December 2022, and anyone can enter the draw for the 3 million tickets that are available so far. The bigger news, though, is the big reveal of the official mascot. No matter what you thought the red triangle symbol was, it's been revealed to be a hat. Specifically, it's a Phrygian cap, which was the special hat worn by Marianne, who's historically been the symbol of the French Republic. The mascots are identical, but the Paralympics version has a racing blade in place of one of its legs. We have the Paris mascots. Ready? They are the Phrygia, okay? That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on the Aussie team? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.